the name our katha takes us into the realm of bhagwan vishnu once more and so the celestial sage narad muni makes his way to vishnu lok for narad muni wants to hear more he wants to hear more about lord ganesh and so going to the realm of lord vishnu maha lakshmi is seated next to lord vishnu and so narad muni bows to both mother lakshmi and vishnu and with his hands together narad muni begins to ask what is he asking oh lord vishnu i know of the creation of lord ganesh i have heard about this bowl of laddu that he holds in his hand has there ever been a time oh lord vishnu where you as the god of sustenance became angry with lord ganesh or lord ganesh became angry with you hearing the question immediately maha lakshmi becomes upset she becomes angry she looks at narad and before lord vishnu could reply mother lakshmi says narad why are you always inquiring about somebody else why don't you think about yourself why don't you plan for your own salvation why are you always asking about somebody else and on behalf of somebody else why can't you think for yourself and act for yourself and think about your own self gratification and narad bends his head but bending his head disrespectfully narad smiles and this makes mahalakshmi even more upset has somebody ever asked a question to your husband or maybe your wife in your presence that makes you automatically angry has somebody ever made a comment to you maybe in the company of your husband or maybe in the company of your wife that makes you totally mad and upset narad muni recognizing lakshmi devi and how angry she became lakshmi devi got up and she walked out uttering not a single word let me ask a question that you could relate to no anybody who always want to find out about somebody else and always want to know something about somebody every time they talk to you and every conversation is based on somebody else and what somebody else did and what somebody else bought and where somebody else went and somebody else and in indirectly you are living or trying to live that person's life and you have forgotten to live your own lakshmi devi gets up and she walks out and as she walks out narad recognizes that she is upset but narad is designed in such a way that that doesn't affect him do you know there are some people they design in such a way that whether how anybody else feels they really don't care all they think about is themselves all they care about is themselves and what they want they get what they want then they don't care about anybody else and so narad standing there in front of lord vishnu with his hands together he says oh lord vishnu maha lakshmi is not here but quickly tell me tell me quickly before she comes back she is already angry and if she comes when you are telling me she'll only get more angry and so narad thinking that he's so intelligent narad asking the question lord vishnu begins to tell for he knows that narad is designed in such a way that narad will not just leave do you know there are some people they just sweep things under the carpet and forget and move on and do you know there are some people they remain angry for a lifetime for foolish things for petty insignificant things for things that to you is of no value and so narad muni singh to bhagwan vishnu tell me quickly lord vishnu begins to tell bhagwan vishnu at one time decided to take a, a route to form and so he decided to traverse the earth and in other regions taking this beautiful form bhagwan vishnu decided that before he went down to the earth he wanted to visit the realm of lord shiva he wanted to see lord shiva if i were to say to you that you're going to die and you have the opportunity to meet with one person before you die who will that person be who will that person be you have the opportunity to meet with one person who will that person be bhagwan vishnu was about to leave the heavens 
he had the opportunity to meet with any being any day but that. and he chose to meet with lord shiva who will you want to meet with never gave thought to that if you had an opportunity to choose the person who will be by your bedside when death will come who will you choose there's some people who will say i want my lawyer to be there so that i'll be able to sign over whatever i have but the reality is when death comes and stands before you the guru prans says if you think of wealth you're born back into the struggle of attaining wealth if you think of mukti god you're born back into or you enjoy your soul enjoys mukti salvation and whatever you think about at that time when that comes it determines what will happen to your soul visiting lord shiva he bowed to the feet of lord shiva and lord shiva knowing that bhagwan vishnu was about to come down on the earth lord shiva gave him a weapon to protect himself what weapon do we equip our children with when they're leaving the home every child was given the warning before they left home a carry new but behave yourself you know or else or else what every child was told by matan vata if you only misbehave you might not get a day but as soon as you come home hmm? have you ever been told that before a carry new but make sure and don't show up your qualities huh but well, i know i heard that actually i might still be hearing that and so bhagwan vishnu left the heavens and he came down on the earth but as lord vishnu came down on the earth lord vishnu was amazed to see all the suffering and all the turmoil and all the distress and all the chaos that was happening on the earth that bhagwan vishnu he felt frustrated have you ever felt frustrated because of somebody else's problem because you genuinely wish that there is something you could do to help that person but you can't because helping is simply not something that you could do it is totally out of your reach ever saw somebody close to you on their dying bed and you wish that there is something that you could do to help or to save that person but that is not in our control health is not even in our control they say if you eat healthy you live long you know they say if you eat healthy you live for a long time what is healthy what is healthy you think that you're eating tomatoes and you're eating pumpkin and you think that you're eating bhaji and you think that you're eating bodhi but the amount of sprays and chemicals and pesticides and how good is it for you how nourishing it is for your body for the first time in my life i'm hearing about what you have to spray lettuce with so that it will remain green for the first time in my life i am knowing that cabbage get something that is called mite for the first time i am hearing that tomatoes gets a fungus and there is something that you have to spray it with so that it will bloom for the first time i am learning and it's true you i am learning this narad muni bhagwan vishnu is saying as soon as i went down on the earth and i saw all the chaos i wanted to leave immediately i decided that i wanted to leave right away ever went a function get dressed in all your nice clothes and everything and as you reach you want to go home have you ever planned to go to a function you get dressed and everybody else get dressed and one of your passengers say to you i want to go home what do you tell the passenger call uber we're well, not in trinidad we don't have uber you try to arrange a ride for that person to go back and you can't find a ride so you know what happened everybody have to go back home how long will you remain angry with that person for how long will you remain vexed with that person nada hearing bhagwan vishnu says immediately i wanted to come back but i spent days and so seeing the suffering of all of the beings what will happen i appeared back into the heavens and so where was i about to go narad says i know where you were going you were going to meet with mahalakshmi and so bhagwan vishnu laughed and he said no no 
Do you know that in a marriage, sometimes the wife is the last person to find out anything? Do you know that in some marriages, the husband is the last person to find out anything? He know that they are having a function at home the day before, actually the day of the function. He doesn't know. He has to find out. Somebody who got invited, invited him. And so, Narad says, well, I'm sure you were going to meet Mahalakshmi. And Bhagavan Vishnu says, no, I made my way to Mount Kailash. And so making my way to Mount Kailash, I stood before the door, the door of Lord Shiva. And standing before the door of Lord Shiva, I met with a being. Who will he meet with? Lord Vishnu says, as I entered Mount Kailash, I met with a being. I went with the intention of meeting Lord Shiva, but I met somebody else. Who will he meet? Standing at the door, he placed his hands together and he started to call out to Lord Shiva. But it was as though this being was preventing him from entering into Mount Kailash. Who will this being be? जग के दुख संताप रे मनेवा जब तुझको कर पाए मोह माया की ज्योति बंधन जब तुझको बरमाए जप नाम से होने होने हो Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya जप तप ही सचा सुख ही ज्ञानी चन बल दे पतित पावन नाम ही उसे का उसे का नाम का जिसे के जीवन की चरिया दोनी हो Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Sing with me Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Vishnu says Narad, as I stood there and I met with his being, it was as though this had happened before. I felt as though this had happened before. Has something ever happened that you felt as though it happened before? And you just can't pinpoint how or where or what? Ever met with a total stranger? And you feel as though you have known that person forever and ever and ever? There is some kind of connection between you and this person and you just can't tell what it is. Bhagavan Vishnu says, Narad, it was as though this had happened before. And so standing near the Dwar, I felt as though it was karma reacting itself over again as it had happened before in the past. And I could almost tell what the outcome was about to be. But I stood there confused and wondering what I should do, what I should do, what my reaction would have been in the past and what it should be now. Have you ever wondered when situations unfold, Bhagavan Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, he said what 
What is happening now has happened in the past. What is happening now will continue to happen. And what is happening now will happen in the future again. We'll meet each other again. We'll sit and we'll do the yagya again. And we have done this in the past and we're doing this now. And we will continue to do this until we gain perfection. Attain mukti, salvation. Can you believe that? That's why every time we have to do it, the planning becomes easier and easier and easier and easier. Because we have done this before. We are doing it now and we will continue to do it until we learn from what we are doing. That's why everything is just a phone call away. And everything is a person just waiting on the other side to say, yes, I am ready. I will do. Just instruct. And it is not happening because of us. It is happening because it happened in the past. It is happening now because it is the will of God. And it will continue to happen. There are many wives praying, God, better I had died instead of my husband. Do you know how much wives pray that prayer? Better I had died instead of my husband. Because my husband left me in distress and in trouble and in turmoil. But he didn't leave you in turmoil. He left you where you could be comfortable. But you created a problem because you didn't learn from your past. He left you with a shelter and he left you with whatever he left you with. And now it is up to you to pick up from that point to forge power. But you know much wives, the husband dead and they sit down and cry. I can't go nowhere, I can't talk to nobody, I can't eat, I can't sleep, I can't do nothing. Give thought, if your husband was alive and you were dead, what will he do? What will he do? Well, I can't begin to imagine Baba I would have been rolling. Like thunder up in the sky, I would have been rolling. Whatever has happened, has happened for a good. Whatever will happen, will happen for a good. But we never see the good right away. Bhagwan Vishnu says, it was as though karma was reacting itself, reenacting itself again. And so standing there, what will happen? Om Namah जिसमें काम हूँ या होते देख और की भगवान शंकर मिला का अनुमत करने वाले गणेश की रहते का भगवान करने आपको करते का पिता स्वर्गा करने वाले अत्कुंठा करने अनिमुट धरने मीटिंग अधिक दो लॉर्ड विष्णु मेंट विद लॉर्ड गणेश लॉर्ड गणेश वास स्टैंडिंग देर and where Lord Vishnu was, he could see Lord Shiva. He could see him. And so Lord Ganesh looked at Lord Vishnu and very respectfully, he bowed. Recognizing that this was Lord Vishnu, he bowed. And he says, Oh Lord Vishnu, tell me where are you going? And Lord Vishnu says, When well, I am going to meet with your father. Lord Ganesh replies, He is not home. He is not here. And so you came in the wrong time. But Lord Vishnu is confused. I'm seeing him and I'm being told that he's not here. Have you ever been told that somebody is not around? Maybe when you're on the phone and then you hear that person's voice in the background. And so, Lord Vishnu stood there and Lord Vishnu says, Well, I'm seeing him. How can you tell me he's not here? Allow me to go, allow me to go. He's expecting me. And Lord Ganesh says, well, he can't be expecting you because he is not home. He is not here. How will he tell you to come? And he is not home. Ever invited somebody to come or set up an appointment with some being for a particular time? And when you go out, you get 
kept back or something happened. Maybe you have to drive behind a big truck to come home. And then everything gets thrown back because of time and you have no control. And then the person who comes to meet you, that person becomes angry because they can't wait to... That, that person has another appointment or something planned and, and it throws off the entire thing. So too, Lord Vishnu says, I am seeing him. Why are you saying he's not there? And Lord Ganesha says, you are not seeing. You think you are seeing, but you are not seeing. Ever see something? And said to somebody, well, I saw with my own eye and they say, well, you didn't see what you see. Ever hear something and you say, well, I heard with my own ears and they say, well, you didn't hear good. Go back and hear again. You didn't listen good. You hear, but you didn't listen. Go back and listen again. And so, Lord Vishnu, standing there, he says, Ganesha, why are you creating obstacles in my pathway when you are the remover of obstacles? Allow me to go. And Lord Gani says, Well, I cannot allow you to go. For my father said to me, Do not allow any being to enter. And so, O oh Lord Vishnu, you cannot enter. Lord Vishnu says, Move away, or I will move you. And so, as Lord Vishnu takes his hand and he's about to move Lord Ganesh, Lord Ganesh takes his trunk and he whips Lord Vishnu with it. Have you ever jokingly hit somebody and didn't realize that you were hitting them hard? Maybe you put your hand on their back, go. And so, automatically Lord Vishnu becomes upset. And the very weapon that Lord Shiva takes to give to Lord Vishnu for his protection, Lord Vishnu takes the weapon and swings it in the direction of Lord Ganesh. The task of Lord Ganesh is severed. One of his tasks. And so Lord Ganesh begins to scream with pain. He begins to scream with pain. The human mind is designed in such a way that anything you don't see, don't bother you. But the minute you see, you're in trouble. Do you know? The doctor is going to give you an injection in a place where you can't see. You say to the doctor, tell me when. Huh? Tell me when. The doctor said, tell you when what? I already gave you. You didn't see, so you didn't even feel it because you didn't know, you didn't, you had no idea when you were getting the injection. But the minute you have to get an injection in a place where your eye could see, before the needle even touch you, you already have pain. That's how the mind is designed. It is designed in that way. Though something is not hurting, the mind say, well, it's supposed to hurt. And automatically it begins to hurt. You get a graze and you don't know. It doesn't bother you, you know. The minute you see it, it starts to scratch, it starts to hurt, it starts to pain. You have everybody check in to see if you will live or if you will die because of it. And so the task falls on the ground and Lord Ganesh grabs his task and he rushes to his father. And holding his task in his hand and crying, Lord Ganesh is holding his task. And looking at his father, he's saying, look, look at what Lord Vishnu has done to me. Lord Shiva in return says, what did you do to Lord Vishnu? You're telling me what Lord Vishnu did to you, but what did you do to Lord Vishnu? Sometimes we tell this story, but we tell this story to make us look good and to make everybody else look bad. They say this story has three sides, your side, my side and the truth. Because somewhere in my side of the story, I will tell something different. And somewhere in your side of the story, you will tell something totally different. And so Bhagwan Vishnu, standing there with his hands together, looking at Lord Shiva, Lord Vishnu speaks. And what is he saying? Listen. Isle ka apne prakash kuch ka pari ka karne wale pita ka daan sampati ka karne wale nishchit ka roop isne ka sankat karne wale iske ka unke ka raksha karne icha ka karne kosh karte hai Lord Vishnu smiles and he says, Lord Shiva, I don't have to tell you. You know. You already know, I don't have to tell you. Somebody ever tell you a story you already know? Or come to tell you something that you know of already? Somebody ever call you to tell you somebody died and you already found out? And they say, but how come you're not reacting? And you say, well, I know since morning, you're now calling me, I know since morning that happened. 
and you are now telling me and so lord vishnu holding the weapon in his hand he says oh lord shiva i have decided that i don't want to go down on the earth again i have decided that i want to stay up in the heavens the suffering on the earth is too much i can't bear it and so i came back here but i came and so this weapon that you gave me was a weapon to protect myself down on the earth and since i decided i'm not going to go again then i'm going to give this weapon to lord ganesh i'm going to give it as a gift to him ever travel some place and maybe you have a suitcase and you know that you're not going to travel again in a hurry so you know somebody is going to travel so you give them the suitcase and you have so much so you tell them you say well you keep it you keep it i have more or maybe they're going into a place that is cold and the last time you went to that place you made a vow you never going back there because it's so cold so when you hear that they're going you say well listen i have a jacket that you will need and you give them the jacket and you say well you wear it when you go so to so to lord vishnu gives the weapon to lord ganesh and lord ganesh holding the task in one hand and holding the weapon in another lord ganesh stands there and at that very same time another being enters another being comes walks in at that very same time and who is he listen the katha tells us shankare shiva o shankare shiva shambho mahadev shankare shiva shankare shiva shankare shiva shambho mahadev shankare shiva this being is singing the praises of lord shiva and singing the praises of lord shiva and entering into shiva lok lord vishnu turns to lord ganesh and in his mind he is thinking how come you didn't stop him how come you stopping me in trinidad there is a proverb that we use or a phrase different strokes for different folks hmm? everybody is treated differently based on your status and based on who you are and based on who know you not who you know who know you in return they make a call and they say hey a fat man come in expect him by gate his name is sunil hmm? a thin man come in his name is nigel expect him and let him walk up and so this being and this and lord vishnu is thinking i know that this unfolded before i know that this happened before and so this is being and that we are sri ved we are sri ved we are sri bows to the feet of lord shiva and ved we are sri begins to cry oh lord shiva time is running out time is running out i need help i need help i need help time is running out have you ever had a deadline to do something and you can't finish in time so you begin to look for help when we have work or when we have activities happening look at the people who will help you selflessly who will volunteer their help look at the people who will call you and say hey you need help although you don't need help and they know you don't need help they still pick up their phone and call and say can i come i want to help you do something it doesn't matter what it is i want to help you do something if i am coming to help you please i am begging you never put me to wash the wares i don't like to wash wares but if i don't have a choice i'll wash the wares but i really don't like to wash wares i could sweep i could probably mop i could probably cook i could probably quarrel i could probably frustrate you but i really don't like to wash wares I don't. If there is an opportunity and I could run from it, I will. But if not, I'll do it. Wait, we ask. She says, "Time is running out, O Lord Shiva, and you must do something to help me. I need a bean to write the Vedas. I need a bean to write the Mahabharata. Tell me, who can I find? But O Lord Shiva, I have a problem. I'm a little bit old now." and so i might forget so once i begin i have to continue without stopping i have to continue without stopping because if i stop i might not be able to continue from that point onwards ever doing something and you have to stop and when you go back to it it becomes different you can't is not the same again ever start eating the hot food 
and the phone ring, and then the food gets cold, and you have to go back. Ever drinking the drink, and then you get occupied doing something else, and the ice melts in the drink. How it tastes after that? Hmm? Watery. It will never taste the same again. Whether what you do, whether what you are, whether what you do, it will never taste the same again. And so Lord Shiva smiles, Bhagwan Vishnu smiles. And they look in the direction of Lord Ganesh. And they say no words. Lord Ganesh volunteers himself. I will write. I will write. You call, you tell me what to write and I will write continuously. And so holding the task in his hand, Lord Ganesh says, well, I have my pen already. It was as though I was waiting for you to come, we asked you. I am ready, here I am. How much of us could stand and say, I am ready, here I am. I am ready, God, here I am. If God puts the problem in front of you and puts the situation in front of you and puts the distress in front of you, it is not because he doesn't like you. But it's God's way of saying, I prepared you for this. Why are you acting as though you are weak? I have made you strong. I know you could manage and I know you could tolerate and I know you could overcome this. Then why are you pretending to be weak? You are stronger than you think you are. Tonight I want to tell you that you are stronger than you think you are. You lie down on the bed and you could move. Say thank you God and get up and move. And by the end of the week try to walk. And by the end of the month try to run. Get up and move. Don't allow your mind to keep you down. Motivate yourself by yourself. Lord Krishna says in the Gita, He says in Bhagavad Gita, lift yourself by yourself. Don't wait. In your free time, you might be able to sing a bhajan, play a bhajan. In your free time, you might be able to chant a mantra, play a mantra. In your free time, you might be able to understand a single thing that is being said. Listen to verses of the Ramayana. Listen to verses of the Gita. Do something that will elevate you, not only physically, but spiritually. Do something that will add value to your soul. Ever hear bhajan and your heart melt? Immediately you feel as though something is happening. And if you hear the bhajan a million times, something is happening. Every single time you hear it over and over and over, it never gets old. You just want to hear it and you just want to hear it and you just want to hear it. So too, just like you crave and you thirst for that which makes you happy somewhere inside. Thirst and crave for that which will make you lift yourself by yourself. Thirst and crave for the things that will motivate you. Keep the company that will help you to elevate yourself. Not only physically, but spiritually. Not only spiritually, but mentally. There are many people who look at you and they say, that is for you. Don't do yoga. You can't stretch. You're old. The best yogi started from somewhere. Do you know? The best yogi started from somewhere. I remember a few years ago, I tried to climb up on a, a rock climbing thing in Brian Lara. And everybody around me said to me, Come Fluffy, you can't do it, but still try. And Fluffy went up. Because Fluffy said, it is them saying to me, I can't do it. I must show them that I could do it. I must prove to them that I could do it. And they're wrong. Although I went up and I made two footsteps and I capsized, I still tried. It is better to try and fail. It is better to try and fall. It is better to try and not accomplish what you said to accomplish. But in your mind, I tried. And I will continue to try until I'm perfect at what I'm doing. The best mathematician started somewhere. The best singer started to sing someday. And somebody who was better than him looked at him and said, Well, you're croaking. The best keyboard man started to play the keyboard someday. A day when he didn't even know a single thing about a keyboard. But you're hearing the keyboard? Now he's a perfectionist. Now he is so perfect that he could teach anybody. And he could pick any note and he could paint. The best shunk blowing. Didn't come by gas, you know. The first day the man had the shank, he watched it and he said, what is this? Blow the date and no sound will come. And then a day came when he mastered the art of how to blow the shank. And then he could blow the shank all the time. What you're capable of doing and what your capabilities are might be mine. 
and what my what capabilities my are mightn't, mightn't be yours but we all need each other and with each other's support and a little bit of everything and knowing a little bit of how to do everything the world will become a better place the world will become a sweeter place to live in for we can now harmonize and use our resources to help each other not only our physical resources our mental resources when we sit together as a group long ago the devatas sat as a sabha as a group together in a circle and do you know why they sat in a circle so that everybody will be seen and everybody's voice will be heard everybody must be seen and everybody must be heard you must be seen and you must be heard you're not insignificant you're very significant always remember that lord ganesh waiting with the task and the weapon in his hand he has to go down on the earth the very same weapon he will use to protect himself on the earth and the very task that broke out that was causing no pain but he thought it would be a burden or a problem because he didn't have a task then it will now become useful there are many things that we have lost that we consider to be ours and prized but do you know everything that you lost or everything somebody stole or took from you and they think that they did you injustice they did you injustice by doing that do you know that every failure is a stepping stone to climb to achieve to win to grow to prosper when somebody thinks that they're doing bad to you they're really doing good to you and they're really doing good for you nobody but it my guru said to me on the dutta he says nobody goes to the mango tree to pelt that have no fruit in them he says so every time they pelt something at you know that you're important every time they say something about you know that they're taking your karma away from you and think just as the mango tree you will pick the ripe mango and you will eat it the tree remains fixed right where it is and the tree has the ability to produce and to produce and to produce not because you pick the mango means that the tree will not give you a mango in time to come continue to grow continue to strive continue to prosper and continue to motivate yourself by yourself lord ganesh goes down on the earth and he has the weapon till today he is holding that weapon in his hand it is called the parashu it is called the axe that form that lord vishnu took and came down on the earth was called parashuram because of the weapon that was given to him where from lord shiva himself lord ganesh holding that weapon it is not a trishul it is an axe and that axe came from lord shiva who is the father of to lord ganesh sorry from his father who is lord shiva umapati mahadeva ki jai